I'm going to be doing a movie theater themed design. It has a bucket of popcorn, a theater ticket, a box of candy, which I decided to go with Junior Mints because they're one of my personal favorites, and then there's just some popcorn strewn across and a pair of 3D glasses. I went with an AMC theater kind of a theme for this, so it's got AMC on the popcorn bucket and on the ticket. You could do whatever theater you wanted to. I just picked one. If you like this design, don't forget to click subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. So we are going to begin with an overlay of a cover pink acrylic, which if you watch my videos, you know I use all of the time. And the biggest reason to use it is because it just is a neutral colored background. Now, I'm just going to say this because I know I've said this in a few other videos, but it never hurts to remind everybody. This is a neutral colored background for me. This is a color background that is very similar to my skin tone, looks very natural and very smooth. If you have a different skin tone than I do, this particular shade of cover pink might not be the right one for you. And I know, so the one I use is from Koopa and it is just so perfect for me and I use it a lot because it really is a good color for me. And there's a couple other brands. I think Kiara Sky, Valentino, Beauty Pure. There's just a few other ones that have a whole range of cover pinks. There are different tones. It's almost like buying like foundation for your skin. There's different undertones. There's different, um, like is it a warm color or a neutral color or a cool color? And there's different depths of color. So depending on you know your personal skin tone and your preferences, you might find that while a neutral shade is a good one for you, it might not be exactly what I'm using. Now that we have that all done and filed and all of that great stuff, we're going to start doing our little pieces that we're going to use for our little movie theater scene. So to sculpt the popcorn bucket, I'm going to start on a fairly wide straw and I'm going to just sculpt a little cylinder around it with white acrylic. Depending on, on like, you know, how thick your straw is, you might want to try to bulk up one side of it to make it look like the bucket is a little bit thicker on one end than the other. That also can come from filing. So once it's been completely cured and you can take it off, you're going to want to file the two ends that are raw. So not necessarily from the middle so much, but like the top and the bottom. And then fill in the bottom of the bucket with a little bit of white acrylic. You can do that easily by setting a bead of white acrylic on a nail point backing and just putting the bucket on it. And then with more white acrylic on the other end, you're going to want to sculpt a little lip right around the edge of the bucket. And now on a nail form backing, we can start sculpting some of our other pieces that we're going to use just to complete this scene. So with some clear acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting the lenses of my pair of glasses. So the 3D glasses, you know, this isn't the common modern version that we see. This is like the older ones that had the one red and one blue lens. If you wanted to do a more modernized 3D pair of glasses where it's little black lenses, you certainly could. I didn't find it nearly as aesthetically pleasing just because it's so dark and so gray, but if you wanted it to be a little bit more current, that would be the route to take. I personally, whenever I think 3D glasses, I always think the blue and red. It's one of my favorites. I remember I had a pair of them from when I was probably in, I don't know, second grade or something, where I had a 3D glasses book and it was tarantulas and you put on the pair of 3D glasses and it made it look like all these, this whole book of tarantulas was like coming out at you. And it was one of my favorite things from that era of my lifetime. So we've got our little pair of glasses. Once you sculpt the two lenses, you're going to sculpt around them with white acrylic. Just make that like boxy square looking frame. And then after you have that done, you're going to want to sculpt the temples of the little pair of paper glasses as well. That's, op that's you know, optional up to you if you want to make them like stick up and off of the nail more. Otherwise, you can leave them flat just like that. And everybody's going to know that they're 3D glasses because that's what they are. So then next to that, sculpt out another piece of the white acrylic, just sort of pat it out nice and flat, and then using a little um, craft knife, cut away the sides. This is going to be for your ticket. Even though in the end you saw that it was painted and it was very little white showing, having just a plain white base is a great start, just so that the ticket has a clean, smooth background for all those colors to stick, you know, to jump off of. And then with more white acrylic, I know it's so hard to see what you're doing when it's just white acrylic against nail form backing. We're going to sculpt a much thicker rectangle of white. This is going to be for our candy box. And depending on the kind of candy you're doing, if it isn't one that has, you know, at least a mostly white box, like for instance, if you're going to be doing nerds or something, you might want to do a color for a box, like a little pink box or a purple box. Otherwise, I can't even think of different kinds of candy off the top of my head and what they're like. Okay, Red Hots would probably be a red, a red box. Anywho, Junior Mints is a mostly white box with some other colors on top of it. So a white base is just a good start. And then with a mix of white and yellow acrylics, you're going to dip your brush into first white acrylic powder and then into yellow. You're going to sculpt multiple little kernels of popcorn. So lay down the beads of acrylic and then with something like either a tweezers or a little toothpick, you're going to just sort of stir up the acrylic 
garlic once it is almost all the way cured. It is not a, you know, a certain system or a certain technique. You just want to kind of mess up the acrylic basically is your goal. There is other ways that I've sculpted popcorn in the past. I have done um, different popcorn bucket videos before. One thing I just really like to do, I love sculpting little kernels of popcorn, little popped popcorns. And I've done different ways of doing it, like one where I almost did like a little triangle shape and then I sort of folded it in on itself. Personally, I find even though that that obviously works, it's a little more tedious and the results don't necessarily look that much better or even that much different. And so if you want to do something a little bit more precise than just kind of randomly squishing up the acrylic once it's done, you can do that. I just personally don't think it's you know, a worthwhile use of time. If you want to see that technique that I'm talking about, I will put links to my previous popcorn centric designs in the description box below, as well as some other movie theater type designs. I know I did an Oscar award once a few years ago, as well as a, um, a clapboard. That's the little board at the beginning of a movie scene before they do each take where that says, you know, what movie it is, what take it is, what scene it is, etc. And then they clap it to, does anybody, do you want to know why they do the, why the clapboards exist? So I don't know if this is common knowledge or not, but when at the beginning of the scene they have the, you know, the two parts of the clapboard that clap together, then they can line up the audio track with the video track because they can see when the clapboard, you know, claps together and they can hear it so they can get everything calibrated. Otherwise, just make all your little popcorn pieces as many as you want, and then you can start putting everything together on the nail. So I'm going to I'll put the little popcorn bucket kind of upright a little bit so that it looks like it's being tipped over across the nail. Some clear acrylic is fantastic glue for these types of products or um, projects. And then we're going to attach the little box of Junior Mints and our glasses. I want this nail to be over the top and crazy, so I'm going to be mostly attaching all of these little pieces so that they extend past the nail a little bit. If you didn't want it to be quite this over the top and crazy, say you were going to be doing this design across a whole set of five nails, you could do one thing on each nail and then they won't have to take up so much space and you could have them be a little bit more wearable. In fact, you could sculpt all of these different things just on the nail and make them less extreme and less crazy. After you have them all attached temporarily though, with just a little bit of clear acrylic, go through and add some more underneath all of the pieces just so that they aren't so fragile and they won't break on you right away, especially underneath that pair of glasses. Add a little bit more underneath the popcorn bucket and then we should be good. Once you have all of those pieces attached, then you can go through and you can start adding the little bits of the popcorn. So lay down some wet acrylic, some very wet clear acrylic, and then quickly set down your pieces of popcorn. If you didn't want to use the clear acrylic, the other option that I would personally recommend is to use something called jewelry gel, which is a very thick viscosity gel product with the intent or with the sole purpose of attaching things like little rhinestones, crystals, embellishments, and it would also work for doing the pieces of popcorn. However, I didn't want that little sticky gel residue anywhere around, and so I'm just going to use some clear acrylic. It works just as well, and if you were to use jewelry gel, you'd want to make sure that you top coat before you put down the pieces of popcorn. So we're going to place all of those in, and once they have all been attached and you've kind of filled up your popcorn bucket as much as you can, I wasn't worried about there being a lot of extra popcorn, say, inside the bucket. My theory is probably that maybe this is at the end of the movie and most of it's been eaten already and there's still a little bit left. Then we're going to take in with acrylic paint, you can start detailing all of your different pieces. So like I said, I'm going with an AMC movie theater. So I'm going to do an AMC themed ticket, an AMC popcorn bucket. You could do this for any theater or you could even make it generic. Like you could just do on the ticket, you could write admit one, which would make it so that it just looks like a movie theater ticket without it being a specific franchise. Otherwise, like on the popcorn bucket, a lot of times popcorn buckets at the theater don't have um, the movie theater's name and logo on it so much. They more have a theme from a, from a movie, whatever movie is the, the hot one out in theaters right now. So like I know that they usually do Marvel. Popcorn buckets are pretty common. So like whatever, you know, whatever movie is really hot or you could do whatever your favorite movie is so like if you wanted to the first thing that comes to my mind and i don't know why when i'm talking about this is to do a jaws themed popcorn bucket which really i don't understand because i hate sharks and so i don't know why that's the thing that comes that keeps popping into my head but whatever your favorite movie is you could do it that way too which would be another fun theme to do i'm going to add a little bit of a darker red almost like a shadow or a glow to both the ticket and the box or the popcorn bucket and then a little bit of yellow and a little bit of black on the movie theater ticket. When I was looking at AMC tickets, I noticed that they are different colors. So there's like a blue ticket and a yellow ticket and a black ticket. And I don't know what 
they mean as far as like you know what they're good for or what the difference is between them I thought I wanted to do a yellow ticket because I thought that would bring some more yellow into it which would go back and kind of correlate with my popcorn and it would just add another color tie in and be aesthetically pleasing if they have some sort of significance and you want to do one versus another one go for it I don't really think it matters then back on my popcorn bucket I am going to be writing AMC for those of you that have followed along with my channel for a while I don't know if anybody will remember this but I had done a um, it was a gorilla video back last maybe September or or August possibly and it was just um it was a gorilla and then it had a stack chart and it had a little rocket ship that said AMC and it was basically saying AMC to the moon if anybody follows along with stock market stuff you may have heard that phrase AMC to the moon or heard about the AMC GameStop stock um whole I don't even know what to call it situation um my husband is very big into amc stocks and well stocks but amc specifically so even though this is just like a generic movie theater design it's also partially for him because i knew that he would really appreciate it and if anybody's curious and you want to know anything about that just look up amc and you'll see so much information i don't even want to go into it because it would be too much but there's there's a lot there so now we're going to do a little amc on our little ticket as well so I'm going to start out with the M in the middle. Whenever you're doing something that has, you know, a certain number of letters and you're doing it where you want it to be centered on whatever you're painting, whatever your space is, start in the middle of the space with the middle letter. So we have three letters in AMC. We're going to start with the second letter in, whichever one's in the middle, which is our M. And then with some gray paint, I'm going to go through and do just a little bit of detailing on the popcorn bucket, basically an outline right underneath the rim. With a sheer blue gel polish, I'm going to be painting in the one lens blue and then with a sheer red I'm going to be painting in the other lens with the red those are already sheer gel polishes they're like a jelly consistency they're from Madame Glam those color names will be in the description box below and then with gel sealer I'm going to go around everything just to be adding a little bit of shine to the background you don't want to make your popcorn shiny necessarily popcorn typically isn't shiny and so that shiny background is really going to make those little popcorn kernels stand out a little bit better if everything was shiny things just don't show up as well with a 3D glaze, I'm going to be applying that over my popcorn bucket, the ticket, the box of candy, basically everything else just so that it has that nice, almost plasticky glow to it. Otherwise, this nail is all done. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Anytime I can create a little 3D scene with a bunch of different elements, I am happy as a clam. So I hope you guys love this one, and I will see you all next time. Bye!